My name is Sandra. I'm 35 years old, and I work in an office. Currently, I share a home with my husband, Matthew, and his mother. Although I'm married, my relationship has become a source of unhappiness due to my mother-in-law's relentless bullying, which shows no signs of letting up. Matthew and I first crossed paths at work, where our companies collaborated on various projects. As we spent more time together, our bond deepened, and we began enjoying meals and outings. After a year of dating, Matthew proposed, and we married when I was 32. In the beginning, our marriage felt like a dream, just the two of us. We enjoyed our independence and had lucrative careers that allowed us to indulge in luxurious weekends filled with travel and fine dining. I envisioned a future rich with cherished memories. However, everything changed three years into our marriage when Matthew's father fell ill and unexpectedly passed away. Overwhelmed with grief, Matthew suggested that we move in with his mother. I was taken aback, while I sympathized with her loss. We had only been married for three years, and I valued our independence as a couple. Following this upheaval, my relationship with my mother-in-law soured rapidly. Her treatment of me became increasingly cruel, making our living situation unbearable. In a shocking move, she handed me divorce papers, claiming it would be best for everyone if Matthew and I separated. Confused and heartbroken, I took some time away and went to stay with my parents for a month to think things over and seek my father's counsel. During that time, I made the difficult decision to file for divorce, though my choice felt resolute. It wasn't long before my mother-in-law began calling me repeatedly, begging for forgiveness and admitting her wrongs. This period was exceptionally challenging, forcing me to reassess my relationships and my pursuit of happiness. I learned to set boundaries and prioritize my well-being in the face of family pressures. Matthew felt a strong obligation to care for his mother, especially after his father's death. As he was her only son, I have to take care of her as much as I can. He told me, weighed down by his regret over not being more attentive to his father. Seeing how deeply affected Matthew was by his father's passing, I felt compelled to support him. Despite my reservations about moving in with his mother, we eventually made the move to her house, and she expressed relief upon our arrival. It's so good to have you here, she said warmly to Matthew, who reassured her. Don't worry, Mom. We're here for you. Her grateful response was clear. Thank you, dear. I'll take care of you both from now on. However, I sensed a distinct chill in her demeanor when it came to me. After settling in, we joined my mother-in-law in the living room, where she had laid out treats from her bakery featuring her famous almond paste. Matthew's eyes lit up as he relished the pastries. And for a moment, I joined in his joy. Yet, the atmosphere shifted when my mother-in-law turned to me with a cold stare and asked, Sandra, are you all right? You look lost. Then, in a brisk tone, she suggested we make coffee to accompany the treats. As I searched for the coffee supplies, she commented dismissively, Where are the coffee pots? You really don't know what you're doing, do you? She pointed to a cluttered shelf and added, Oh, they're over there, where the wife's stuff is. Her words stung, and I couldn't shake the feeling that she was deliberately undermining me. This interaction underscored the challenging dynamics of living together, amplifying my doubts about our decision to move in. Before this, we had often visited her home, and whenever I tried to help, she would insist. No need. Just sit down effectively pushing me out of the kitchen. It seemed she had her own way of doing things and wasn't open to any disruptions. Eventually, I stopped offering help, hoping to reduce the tension, but that only seemed to invite more criticism from her. One time, after receiving a particularly harsh rebuke, I, she fixed me with a piercing glare and snapped. What's with that look? Do you have a problem? Not wanting to escalate the conflict, I silently hoped my husband would step in. I glanced over at him, seeking support, but he was engrossed in his phone, seemingly unaware of the discomfort his mother was causing me. 
It was both frustrating and hurtful that he didn't seem to notice, let alone address the situation. This tension marked just the beginning of our challenging living arrangement. Almost immediately after moving in, issues began to emerge more frequently. One morning, my mother-in-law burst into our room, exclaiming, Hey, Sandra, why are you still in bed? I glanced at my phone. It was only 6 a.m. I replied, slightly bewildered. It's just 6 o'clock in the morning. Mother, unfazed. She shot back. So what? You should be up making breakfast and preparing Matthew's lunch. And don't forget that you're supposed to clean the bathroom every day. Her expectations were jarring. Normally, I didn't make lunch for Matthew. As we often skipped breakfast, we weren't really morning people. Moreover, cleaning the bathroom before heading to work felt impractical and exhausting. The idea of waking up early to tackle all these tasks was overwhelming. As I hesitated to respond to my mother-in-law's demands, her irritation grew. Why are you just standing there? Hurry up! What kind of upbringing did you have that made you so useless? Her harsh words stung, igniting a mix of anger and determination within me. In response, I decided to confront her expectations head-on. From that moment, I began waking up at 6 a.m. every day, preparing not just basic meals but also more elaborate dishes for both my husband and myself. I made it a point to ensure the bathroom was spotless, and to my surprise, I found a sense of satisfaction in maintaining a clean space. Matthew noticed my efforts and often expressed gratitude for the meals and the cleanliness. However, my mother-in-law's attitude remained unchanged. If anything, her demands escalated. One day, she would crave Japanese cuisine, only to switch to French the next, insisting on dishes like homemade pizza and freshly cooked pasta paired with red wine from upscale shops. Each meal felt like a special occasion, but the daily expectation began to wear on me. Most frustrating was that Matthew consistently sided with her, instructing me to cater strictly to his mother's whims. Make sure you do it exactly how my mom wants. He'd say, offering no help. He completely disengaged from the tasks, leaving everything to me, and our precious days off were consumed with preparing elaborate dinners for her. That was weak, he muttered, unable to grasp that I was truly reclaiming my life and independence. But when I insisted on finalizing the divorce, Matthew's demeanor shifted dramatically. He glared at me sharply. Don't mess around. I'm serious. I asserted. My resolve firm. Without another word. Matthew snatched the divorce papers from my hands and quickly filled in his section. He slammed the papers down on the table. Is this good enough? He asked bitterly. Even if you want to take it back. It's too late. Oh well. This means it's over for you too. He declared attempting to mask his dismay with a cold laugh. My mother-in-law chimed in, her voice sharp as she sought to undermine my stance. But in my heart, I thought, it's over for you, realizing that it truly was the end for them as soon as I walked away. Without further delay, I left my in-law's house and immediately submitted the divorce papers. When I returned to my parents' home, I recounted everything to my father who was deeply shocked but promised to support me in whatever actions were necessary. A month later, my phone was inundated with calls from my mother-in-law. Hello? What do you want? I answered, my tone icy. We're strangers now. I added firmly. Please don't say that. Matthew and I are in a difficult situation. She pleaded, her words lacking sincerity. I replied curtly. Oh, really? That must be tough for you. Her response was predictably sarcastic. I haven't said anything yet. I'd rather end this call. Can I hang up? I pressed, eager to disconnect. Wait, I have a favor to ask. Can you talk to your father? She implored, desperation lacing her voice. Why should I? After everything you and Matthew put me through, I shot back the hurt still fresh. I'm sorry about that. 
I didn't realize that your father's company is an important business partner of the company Matthew works for, she explained, attempting to mend bridges. It turned out my father ran a successful company that had dealings with Matthew's firm. We might have discussed this before our marriage, but at that time, my father-in-law was still alive, and perhaps my mother-in-law hadn't seen the need to involve herself in those discussions. As for Matthew, it was strange that he didn't remember, but perhaps he had overlooked it while siding with his mother and criticizing me. When my father decided to sever the business dealings, Matthew's company opted to continue the contract by letting Matthew go, resulting in his job loss. This turn of events underscored the consequences of their actions and highlighted how intertwined our fates had become. As it turned out, Matthew had ambitious plans to remodel our family home in anticipation of a long-term future together. To finance these renovations, he had taken out a substantial loan. However, with his recent unemployment, managing the loan repayments became nearly impossible. Up until our divorce, I had contributed my fair share to our living expenses as a company employee, which had helped keep us financially afloat. Now, with the divorce finalized, Matthew and my mother-in-law found themselves in a precarious situation. Why did you feel the need to show off by remodeling the house? Matthew, you're so proud, just like your mother. I couldn't help but think amidst their financial turmoil. My mother-in-law reached out again, her voice now tinged with desperation. Please help me, she pleaded. I apologize for my mistakes, she added her tone weak and devoid of the usual defiance. I'm sorry, but I can't forgive you for what you've done. I responded firmly. If you're expecting me to help you, it's pointless. Instead, focus on finding a job, even if it's temporary. As for me, this conversation is a waste of time, so I'm ending it now. With that, I hung up and took the definitive step of blocking their numbers. Later. I learned that Matthew and his mother could not keep up with the mortgage payments and were forced to sell the house. It had been a relatively new home, one that could have comfortably supported my mother-in-law through her retirement. It was a shame that their poor financial management and unnecessary extravagance led to such a waste. They ended up relocating to an apartment on an island somewhere, where my ex-husband now works part-time. This drastic change in their circumstances highlighted the consequences of their actions and the impact of our severed ties. While they now depend on my mother-in-law's pension to make ends meet, I've been preparing for a significant change in my own life. Instead of renting a new place right away, I decided to stay with my parents until my departure. This time with them is precious, and I intend to cherish every moment until I move overseas. I'm filled with excitement and hope about starting anew in a different country. Despite the past difficulties with my ex-husband and mother-in-law, I remain optimistic about what the future holds. It's puzzling why they treated me poorly, but I'm relieved to have severed those ties. Perhaps in this new chapter abroad, I might even meet a wonderful partner and explore the possibility of an international marriage. I genuinely wish happiness for my ex-husband and mother-in-law in their future endeavors, whatever they may be. Thank you for following my story. If you found it engaging, please consider subscribing to the channel. I'm looking forward to sharing more updates and stories with you as I embark on this exciting journey. As if that wasn't enough, she relentlessly critiqued my life choices. You're a wife. Why are you still working? You should be home taking care of your husband. Plus, you're getting older. Do you realize your time to have children is running out? You're almost worthless, she would assert daily. Her words, laden with demands, cut deeply, forcing me to question the character of someone who could speak so harshly. The constant scrutiny and pressure made me wonder how sustainable this living situation really was. One particularly stressful day compounded by a challenging day at work and ongoing tension with my mother-in-law. Matthew confronted me with an accusation. My mom says you're neglecting the housework. Is that true? You never listen to me and always act defiantly. I used to appreciate the lunches you made every day, but now it's all frozen food. Do you really believe what your mom says? I asked. 
incredulous. Of course I believe her. Why wouldn't I? Are you suggesting my mom is lying? You're acting like a terrible wife. Can't you fulfill your role properly? He snapped, his tone sharp and accusatory. I was furious at his lack of understanding and support. What are you talking about? Just look around. I make homemade lunches, clean, do laundry, and cook dinner every day. My frustration was mounting. I'm telling you to stop lying. What mom says is true. Matthew shot back, dismissing my efforts entirely. You're acting crazy, you mama's boy. What are you even saying? You never believe me or help me with anything. What exactly do you want from me? You're such a nuisance, I retorted, the argument escalating quickly. The anger on Matthew's face marked a significant turning point in our relationship. From that day on, the atmosphere at home became even more challenging. Whenever my mother-in-law criticized or harassed me, Matthew began to echo her insults. Hey, is dinner ready? I just got home. Hurry up, my husband demanded one evening as soon as he walked through the door. You're so slow and useless, my mother-in-law chimed in, her words cutting deep. As they both berated me, I muttered under my breath, you're both failures. Exhausted and feeling increasingly isolated, I watched them decide to go out to eat together, leaving me behind. 2. Never mind. Let's just go out to eat together, my husband suggested abruptly. That sounds good. Let's go, my mother-in-law agreed enthusiastically. As they left, I felt completely excluded from the outing, a glaring reminder of how disconnected I had become from what was supposed to be my family. Day by day, I endured insults and belittlement from both of them, and it forced me to question the viability of staying in such a marriage. Was it worth enduring this relentless negativity? Just then, life handed me an unexpected opportunity to change everything. As I considered this new chance, I realized I didn't have to tolerate the toxic environment created by my husband and mother-in-law any longer. Their usual taunts continued unabated. You're worthless as a daughter-in-law. I can't understand how my son ended up marrying you. My mother-in-law scolded, her voice dripping with disdain while my husband smirked beside her. Seizing the moment, I stood tall, my resolve strengthening. I'm going back to my parents' house for a month, I announced. They both stared at me, surprise and anger flashing across their faces. What about the house? What if there's a fire? My husband exclaimed in panic. You're being incredibly irresponsible. If you're leaving, then just divorce my son, my mother-in-law shouted, her anger palpable as she yanked a drawer open and pulled out divorce papers, thrusting them at me. Go ahead. Sign them. She challenged. Oh, mom, you're prepared for this? Matthew remarked, clearly taken aback. That's right. You have no choice but to obey us. If you don't like it, then get a divorce, my mother-in-law asserted, convinced of her control over the situation. Fine, let's get divorced then, I replied decisively, surprising them both. Their eyes widened in shock at my firm stance, but I ignored their reactions and began filling out the divorce papers. I'm done with my part, so please leave quickly. I told them, my voice steady. Matthew blinked in disbelief, unable to reconcile the woman standing before him with the one he thought he could easily manipulate. Was that earlier just a bluff?